Now last week I taught you some division strategies uh, using um, such as using multiplication to solve division and also uh, distributing numbers to make division a little bit easier again. So today I'm going to show you a few other division strategies that might be useful um, and hopefully will make things simpler for you. So I'm going to start with uh, a different strategy today which is using place value to solve division. So let's start with uh, like maybe a larger division problem, like such as, uh, let's go 295 divided by 5. Okay, so how I'm going to solve this problem is I'm going to, 295 is a big number. So I'm going to pull that number apart into its, I guess its place value. So 295 is the same as um, 200 plus 90 plus 5. And I'm going to divide all of those um, different parts and now by 5. So I can solve 200 divided by 5. And, oh well, I can use my knowledge of like 10 numbers here. Because I know that 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 200 divided by 5 is 40. And 90 divided by 5 is 18. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. And now that I've solved each of those parts separately, I'm now going to put them all back together again. And 40 plus 18 plus 1 is 59, so the answer to 295 divided by 5 is in fact 59. Okay, now we're going to try one that's a little bit harder, because you probably saw the last one. It divided fairly evenly, because I used 5 and that's a nice one. So, let's go really tricky this time. Let's go, um, let's make it 493 divided by uh, 6. Now, I don't really like the look of that because that looks pretty tricky. So, I'm going to use my place value idea to pull this number apart again to make it a bit easier. So, I'm going to turn 493 into 400 plus 90 plus 3 and then I'm going to divide each of those separately by 6 again. Okay, now this one's a little bit trickier, so we're going to have to use a little bit of our knowledge of multiplication and also knowing our sort of a little trick about using powers of 10 or using 10 numbers. So I'm going to divide 400 by 6 first. Now, I know that 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, so 6 is going to go into, uh, so 6 would go into 46 times, which means 6 goes into 460 times, but there will be, so, but 6 times 60 is 360, which leaves me with like 40 left over. So I'm going to add my 40 to this 10. I'm going to add it to this 90. So my 90 now is 130. Okay, because that was left over from here. So now I'm going to divide 130 divided by 6. Well, I know that 6 times 20 is 120, and then that leaves me like another 10 left over to make up the 130. So I'm going to add that 10 to the 3 now, and this now becomes 13. Now I'm going to divide 13 divided by 6 and well I know that 12 divided by 6 is 2 but I would still have a remainder of 1 and now if I add all my parts back together I have 60 plus 20 plus 2 which is 82 remainder 1. So the problem of 493 divided by 6 is 82 with one left over, remainder one.
Okay, let's um, let's practice another one. So I'm going to come up with um, uh, another one. Um, let's go. Uh, 382 divided by, oh, I like 4. Okay, so now I'm going to use my pulling apart place value idea again. So I'm going to change 382 to 300 plus 80 plus 2. And I'm going to divide all of those parts here by 4. So my first problem is 300 divided by 4. Now I'm going to use my bit of knowledge of multiplication and also powers of 10. So uh, I know that um, 4 times 7 is 28. So that means 4 must go into 370 times, but there's going to be um, like 20 left over. So I'm going to add 20 onto here. Now that's because 4 goes into 37 times because 4 times 7 is 28 and 2 more would be 30. But I'm dealing with a power of 10. So 4 times 70 would be uh, 280 and another 20 makes it 300. That's where that 20 came from. So now 20 and 80, this now becomes a 100. So 100 divided by 4, well that's easy, that's 25. And 2 divided by 4, well that doesn't really work because, um, uh, well, it's, it's not going to leave me with a whole number. It's actually going to be a half a number. So I'm just going to leave that as remainder 2 at the moment. Now that I've worked out my parts, I'm going to add 70 plus 25, which is 95, and I've got remainder 2, or in this case, because it's dealing with 4, it would be 95 and a half. So the answer to 382 divided by 4 is 95 remainder 2, or 95 and a half. Okay, now I'm sure at this point you're probably uh, wondering why you haven't seen something that looks like this yet. Uh, and that's what, this is a, like a more formal method or, and I'm guessing this is pretty much how your mum or dad or someone did it when they were at school. And it would look like division written more in this form. Say, uh, and I'm just making this up, we've got 295 divided by 5. Okay, so let's have a think about what this means. And I'm going to use my pulling apart method again. This is a way of doing it. So again, we can say uh, 5, and I'm going to pull this number apart into 200 plus 90 plus 5. Okay, so now we're going to solve each of the place value parts separately. So 200 divided by 5, because I can use my knowledge of multiplication and powers of 10. So 5 goes into 24 times. So 5 will go into 240 times. And now I need to solve 90 divided by 5. Well, how many times is 5 going to 90? And I know that 5 times 18 is 90. And then my last remaining part is 5 divided by 5, which of course is 1. And when I add my, my results together, I'll have 40 plus 18 plus 1, which is... 59. So that's enough, just another way of setting out the, the problem gate. Now we're going to have a look at this another way, um, and a way that you've probably been used to having it explained to you, but I'm going to explain it, um, I'm going to explain it my way. So let's say if we've got a question like, um, eight, how many times does 8 go into 356? Or how, do, how what's 356? divided by 8. Okay, now you've probably heard this before. We say, how many times does 8 go into 3? It doesn't work. Well, in actual fact, it does work, because in actual fact, this is we know that this is a 300 and a 50 and a 6. We know that 8 goes into 300. It does. Um, but we often hear 8 goes into 3. It doesn't work, so we can't do it. What we're actually doing here is thinking about this place value idea as hundreds, tens, 
and ones. So rather than treating the, thir the, the three as three hundreds, we're actually going to treat the three and the five as, I guess, 35 tens. The reason we do this is because it just helps us with our multiplication facts. So we can now ask ourselves, how many times does eight go into 35 tens? Well, eight times four is 32. So I know that will go in four times and there will be three tens left over. Okay, and three tens of course is 30. So I'm now going to add that onto my ones over here. So I now have 36 ones. Uh, so now I'm going to say, how many times does eight go into 36? And oh, as I said before, it goes eight times four is 32. So it goes in four times and there is four left over, remainder four. So 356 divided by eight is 44, remainder four. Okay, let's try another one. We'll go through it again. Um, this time we'll go uh, 576 and we'll divide that by, uh, let's go, seven, because that doesn't look like a very nice sum to work out. I don't like the look of it. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, using another method is I'm going to treat this as thinking about my, um, what sort of my multiplication facts. Uh, I know that seven won't really go into five, even though I know it's a 500. Um, but I know that seven will go into 57, which is 57 tens. Okay, so here are my uh, my tens and my ones. Okay, now I know that seven times eight is 56, so, uh, and that would leave me with one left over, or one tens left over. So I can carry that over into my, my ones. So I now have a 10 and a six, which of course is 16. And now I can ask myself, how many times does seven go into 16? Or 16 divided by seven. And I know that seven times two is 14. And there would be two left over to make the 16. So 576 divided by seven is 82 remainder two. So hopefully through this video, you've got lots of different ideas on some lots of different strategies that you can use to try and solve division problems. You can use multiplication facts, powers of 10, pulling numbers apart, and even getting really creative with the way you can work these problems out. But the best way to get good at them is just to practice, practice, practice. So make up your own problems, practice, practice them at home, and before you know it, you'll be a division expert. So. Practice hard, good luck.